Hello, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello, welcome back to Ask Rob and Rob. It is a Tuesday, so we must have a podcast. And yes, you're right, we do. It's episode 24. And this is the podcast where we answer your questions. You ask Rob and myself, and I'm called Rob, and that's why it's called Ask Rob and Rob. See what we did? And then we will answer your questions. And like the title, it's very simple for you to call in and ask your questions. Yes, it is. We've got two options, both of them very simple. First of all, if you prefer to pick up the phone, all you need to do is dial 013-808-0035. That's 013-808-0035. Leave us a voicemail and you'll hear us read it out on the show and answer your question in the coming weeks. Alternatively, if you'd rather use your computer to leave us a message instead, just go to thepropertyhub.net slash podcast. Look for the box on the right hand side where you can leave us a voicemail that way instead. Whichever way you do it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you do do it. And that's what John did. John had a question for us. Let's hear it now. Hi, my name's John. Uh, just looking at getting into uh, property investment. Really like the podcast, guys, so keep it up. Um, just wondered what your thoughts were on delayed completion um, as a strategy where you pay a certain amount um, up front and then continue to pay the mortgage for a number of years uh, before obviously having the option to buy it outright um, at the end of the mortgage term. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Many thanks. Bye now. Okay, so there's a couple of different things going on in this question. First of all, there's delayed completions. This effectively is where you will exchange on a property, so you're legally committed to buying it, and then you'll set a completion date for some date in the future. So normally you'll exchange and then there'll be a period of time, anything from like a day to a month or so, until you actually complete and you pay over the balance of the funds. What you can do is extend that time frame, and so you've got longer to complete. So for example, you might just put down a deposit So you're committed to the transaction, but then set completion for a year's time. So you've got more time in which to come up with the balance of the funds. And you might agree with the vendor in the meantime to um, have them move out of the property and you be able to rent it out in the meantime. As a kind of a side note to that, although typically you put down 10% when you exchange, it doesn't have to be. The forfeit amount is generally 10%, but you can put down more or less Um, or anything. So you can structure deals in lots of different ways. In John's question, he talked about having the option to buy. And that's really a separate thing. Because once you've exchanged, then you are committed to buying. Having an option is something a little bit different. That is where you'll say, okay, well, I will take over the property now, I will make any payments that are due on things like mortgages and rent the property out. And then within a set time scale, if I want to, I will then go ahead and buy it. Uh, If I don't, I won't, and I'll give the property back. They're really two different things. They can be employed together, but they're both different ways of structuring a deal. The good thing about having an understanding of these kind of strategies is it will allow you to do some deals that other people won't be able to do. So if all you know is how to buy a property the normal standard way, then there will be opportunities that don't fit into that framework. And if you've got a knowledge of how to make other techniques work, you might be able to make something happen, whereas previously you wouldn't have been able to do it. But there are downsides to it as well, Rob. There are. This is not a straightforward strategy. It's not one you would normally expect a newbie to do. Yes, there are courses on these strategies and that you can pay for, but that's probably because they're not straightforward and you need a course to understand it. Now, that's not to say don't do it, But I would say for the majority of people new to property investment, it's not the ideal starting route. Understand traditional buy-to-lets before you go on to more complex stuff. Now, you know yourself best. If you feel confident that you like to take a bit of risk and, you know, this is quite interesting. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, so what? Then that's fine. Maybe have a look. But I would suggest looking at different strategies, talking to more people. Maybe get along to one of the Property Hub meetups. Speak to other investors there about your ideas and ask them what they're doing. Try and get ideas from them. And by doing that, you'll start to get a few more options on the table and then you can decide whether it's a good one to to move forward. So as a general rule, I'd say this probably isn't a newbie strategy, but if you are keen and if you you know don't mind taking a bit of risk and that suits your personality then crack on but before you do that i'd assess all the options available to you 
And that is exactly why we do what we call the Property Hub Summit, where we get together in a room with 16 investors and help them work out the best strategy for them. So it's very much not a property course in the traditional sense. All the generic information we can give away for free on podcasts or through other means or through some of our courses. But when it comes down to how to apply it to your own specific situation, that's a lot more tricky. And that's something where you can't just kind of make general statements. You really need to get together and understand what it is you're trying to achieve, what your skills are and so on, and put together a plan that works for you. And what's notable when we do this is we're very much not going around the room and giving everyone the same advice. Two people sitting next to each other might come in with exactly the same idea. And for one of them might say, go for it. That sounds really good. And the other say, not sure if that's going to work because they're trying to achieve different things or they're starting from different places. So that's the beauty of the summit. It really gets deep into individual strategy, which is at the core of successful property investing. Getting the strategy right is far more important than any individual little bit of knowledge you can pick up about a specific thing. If you're interested in joining us at one of our summits this year, there's a really easy way for you to find out more. All you need to do is pick up your phone and text the word summit followed by a space and then your email address to 88802. So that's the word summit, S-U-M-M-I-T, then a space and your email address to 88802. We will then send you some more information about exactly what it is, where it is, dates that are coming up, and you can decide from there if you'd like to join us. So we hope you do join us, but you certainly can join us on Thursday when we'll be back with the Protty Podcast, and of course, back next Tuesday with another Ask Rob and Rob. Until then, have fun. Bye-bye.